Hello guys, welcome back to the Talk Transit, a pathology educator at Academy. So in the series of questions, we are, we are discussing about the NEET PG 2021 uh, recall based ones. So in the question number 19, we just have a couple of more questions to end the pathology session. I know it's a long ride. It has been a long ride. And uh, I have been discussing every question individually so that it will help for you in future. Fine. So this is a simple question. I hope you must have, most of you have got right. Okay. So the 10 year old, as the question reads, a child brought to the OPD with history of swelling of the face. So I want us to discuss one by one terms here. <clears throat> so when I have history of swelling in the face, I'm not having an asarka. There is no pedal edema. Nothing is mentioned here. So face related swelling, the first possibility, I'm not going through the entire question. From the first possibility, I'm going to think of some renal problem. It could be anything from a tiny little acute uh, tubular necrosis till your uh, stage 5 CKD. Anything can be there, but something re related renal is a problem here. Fine. I just wanted to comment why a renal involvement has a facial swelling. Actually, there's a real reason behind it. If you can get it from your medicine textbooks, do it uh, below. Others I'll be discussing in one of the classes. We can we'll be able to understand everything and why this actually real thing has an period orbital puffiness first. Fine. We'll come back to the question. On routine investigation, the child had proteinuria. Again, proteinuria when I take, I'm going step by step. When I take proteinuria, my first possibility is okay, renal related proteinuria. Again, it's a very, very wide thing because I don't have the exact amount of proteinuria here, but it's massive whether selective, non-selective. Based on that, I do have a differential diagnosis, right? So if I say a selective protein we have, where albumin alone is going outside, you are going to think of a nephrotic syndrome. Non-selective protein we have, nephrotic syndrome, ATN, anything. Any renal disease can have a non-specific protein we have, right? So protein we have is a little bit blue. And then a cholesterol of 230. And the cholesterol of 230 is definitely high. But in a 10-year world, I'm fair enough to rule out all the... Um, lipid-based disorders, right? Why I'm not thinking of your familial hypercholesterolemia is that will not be 230. It'll be extremely high. You must have read them in biochemistry. The entire list of familial hypercholesterolemia will be extremely high. So this cholesterol elevation is also a part and parcel of the renal disease, right? And also you have, this is my diagnostic thing. Oval fat bodies in my urine microscopy. So when I say in urine microscopy, oval fat bodies, which means the fat is not alone increased, it's also getting excreted in the urine. There's only very, very specific conditions where when fat is seen in the urine, my first possibility is nephrotic syndrome. That's the only thing is going to be here, fine. So what is your most probable diagnosis, okay? If there is anything missing in this question from the recall, do comment below so that we can come back and see what is the error happening here. It's definitely not UTA. Because for UTA, my primary thing is I'm going to have hematuria. That's that's how it is. Pain, everything will be there. So not a UTA. Good pasture syndrome. See, when I take good pasture syndrome, it's going to present in the nephritic range, right? So that also I'm fairly ruling it out. Again, I'm ruling it out nephritic syndrome as well. So the only possibility here is my nephrotic syndrome. So my answer here has to be a nephrotic syndrome, right? Based on the information given here, I know that is a nephrotic syndrome. So let's discuss something in relation with nephrotic syndrome. I am sure the first thing whenever we are going to discuss nephrotic syndrome is what comes as your most common, right? Though the most common is uh, overrated thing, but I want you to remember at least the first possibility. See, I don't want you to remember every most common here, second most common thing. But uh, these things which are practically important for me for diagnosing a case is required. Like simple, I am having a child with nephrotic syndrome, like in this case. What will be the first probable thing you will think? Your minimal chain disease. The other name of minimal chain disease is lipoinephrosis, right? So look for them also in the option if minimal chain disease is not there, fine. So when I'm going to think of an adult, I'm going to think of an FSGS, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. I'm not going to elderly, unlikely to be required for me. So if there's a theoretical possibility of an, let's say, 60 or 80 years old person, more than 80 years, so like 90 years, very elderly person presenting with a nephrotic syndrome, one of the possibilities minimal chain disease, right? And very, very elderly person presenting with a nephrotic syndrome, one of the possibilities minimal chain disease. So, sorry, the membranous glomerulonephritis, right? Non minimal chain disease, right? So, why I'm going to think of a membranous glomerulonephritis if the person is an extremely elderly person? Because when you take membranous glomerulonephritis, I'm sure you must have learned about your primary and the secondary. The secondary membranous glomerulonephritis are most common in cancers. So, when I take an elderly person, 70s, 80s, 90s, there's definitely a risk of cancer associated. So cancer associated membranous glomerular nephritis has an upper hand for FSUs. That is the reason why I'm going to say that okay, elderly will have more of membranous glomerular nephritis. For all intents and purposes, I'm going to keep it as a child, minimal chain disease, adult FSUs. This is more than enough for me to go ahead with the diagnosis. Fine. So when I say nephritic versus nephrotic, 
I'm sure you know the difference. Nephritic syndrome, I'm going to have a classical hematuria, non-selective proteinuria. I won't have all the other findings. These are the two things and hypertension clinically will be there. When I say nephrotic, nephrotic is a wide range of problem, right? So all the problem in nephrotic syndrome stems from my problem in the basement membrane or the capillary pressure with the filtration. So it sends out lots and lots of proteins, right? This is a like an overall whatever happens in nephrotic syndrome, I'm going to put it here, fine? So the my, main problem, as I said, is increased glomerular permeability, right? So there's an increased filtration of plasma proteins which results in urinary loss of proteins carrying hormones, metals, and vitamins. See, this is important for me. I'll come to it later. Why this is important for me? Because I can have one more associated disease, which is generally not much discussed. I want to take time and discuss here, fine? And I'm going to have an altered turnover of immunoglobulins. Obviously, when I, so I'm going to lose something, turnover of immunoglobulins increases, right? So I have, I'll have reduced cellular immunity because my components of them is gone. So there's an increased risk of infection. So this could be a symptom. So it's not just always you have to present facial puffiness. I can have a patient with an increased infection. Why I want you to concentrate here is, when I say increased infection, automatically our thought process goes to few immunodeficiency diseases, right? Here I'm having loss of globulins because of that I have problems, right? Alteration in the coagulation factor, thromboembolism. This also could be a presenting factor. See, when I see a patient with nephrotic syndrome, I can have thromboembolism. But am I going to give prophylactic uh, anticoagulants for these patients? The answer is no. I can have thromboembolism. If the patient presents with the thromboembolism, then I can treat them. I'm not going to give prophylactic because these incidences are a bit less, very, very less, fine. Then since it's selective protein predominantly, albumin goes outside a lot. When albumin goes outside, malnutrition is one. So you can have a history of loss of weight also. I don't get uh, jittered and don't think there's something else in the diagnosis, fine. I can have an increased tubular resorption of protein, which causes tubular damage, which causes tubular dysfunction. Though it started with nephrotic syndrome, it can destroy the tubules. When tubules get destructed, you can have an elevated creatinine and everything, right? So when I have an elevated creatinine, again, don't think that, okay, this is an fulminant renal failure. It's also possible. It may not be like five, six milligram per stage, but slight elevation of creatinine is possible in a nephrotic syndrome, which is protein related damage to the tubules, fine? Then hypoalbuminemia will cause your edema, where you have anasarca. And this hypoalbuminemia will cause increased hepatic genes of lipoproteins, which causes your hyper lipoproteinemia, which causes lipoduria. See, this is one school of thought. It's saying that when I'm having albumin loss, it automatically will have a feedback mechanism on the lipoproteins. When that is increased, my hyperlipoproteinemia will be there, cholesterol increases, and I'll have lipoduria, fine? So what comes first, lipoduria or hypercholesterolemia is not as sure. There are two schools of thought, both of them are standard textbooks. Few of them say that, okay, lipoprotein comes, hyperlipidemia comes first, cholesterolemia, because of that, I'm having lipidemia. Some say that there's a urinary loss of lipid, because of that, compensatory, I have hypercholesterolemia. I'm okay with both. Ultimately, what I should have, I should have this lipidemia. Because hypercholesterolemia is not enough to diagnose nephrotic syndrome. When I'm having lipid in the urine, which is again telling me there's a problem in my glomerular permeability, my diagnosis is perfect, right? This flowchart helps you to remember everything. Like as I said in the start, this is important for me, right? It's urinary loss of pro proteins. We have most of the time concentrated on your albumin only. Here we saw that there's alteration in the coagulation factor because antithrombin 3 goes outside, right? In addition to this albumin antithrombin 3, I'll have a loss of your ferritin, your transferrin, everything. See, this becomes very important. When transferrin gets lost, there's no iron needed for the person, or there's no person to carry the iron to the bone marrow, right? So these loss of proteins will cause an iron deficiency anemia. This is very, very important. IDA will be a problem here, right? So I'll tell what is unique about this IDA. Here, the IDA is not due to the absence of dietary iron because predominant of the idea due to absence of dietary iron. Here, I'm not having transferrin. I'm not having the protein which binds to iron. In other words, if I'm going to treat this patient with oral iron therapy, because it will be a classical case of IDA, I know it's an IDA, I'm going to treat it with oral iron therapy. I give oral iron, it got absorbed. This oral iron can also not reach my erythroid because transferrin is not there. So this idea is very, very unique saying that it will not respond to your oral iron therapy. You have to remember that. So when I have an iron deficiency anemia, which is not responding to oral therapy in nephrotic syndrome, the answer is due to loss of transfer. Generally, we miss this part. 
I want you to remember this part as well, fine? So in your middle, I, I want you to comment again, then how do we treat this case of Ayanir Cinema, right? So you comment that on that, and I did ask one more question to comment on in the start. I want you to comment on both, why I'm going to have an very uh, orbital edema and effort in renal related damage, first thing. Second thing, how do I treat a case of INDFC anemia, which is secondary to your nephrotic syndrome because of loss of transfer, which is refractory to my oral ion, fine? That's in short about discussion about nephrotic syndrome, fine? So do download the Unacademy app and we will be discussing lots of questions for your NECIT and the upcoming NEET exam in the form of free classes. I hope you have had good scores in your NEET PG. It's fine if you have not scored at less, like not scored to the up to the mark what you wanted. Take a day of rest. Don't take any hasty decisions when you have got the scores because there'll be lots of emotions running over. I don't want you to be disturbed because of that. If you have any problem, do talk to any one of us. We'll be more than happy to listen to your queries and answer to you, fine? Thanks a lot. And if you have any problem in the recalls, whatever we are discussing, do comment below. Or any other doubts, do comment below. I'll be able to overlook at these comments and I'll reply to you, fine? Thank you for your time. See you soon. Till then, bye-bye from Dr. Hanjit. Bye-bye.